today we'll be discussing about periodontal surgery the incisions that are used in it and the instruments that are required to give those incisions so we'll just quickly do some basics about periodontal flap surgery and then we'll move on to the incisions and the instruments so when do we do periodontal flap surgery when we have deep pockets which are not manageable by non surgical therapy alone that is your scaling and root planing now what is a periodontal flap it's just a mode of getting access once we raise a flap what we are going to do is again non surgical therapy what do we do in a flap we separate the soft tissue what we refer to as a flap from the underlying bone to remove calculus infected tissues and make the root smooth we put it back suture it and the body does the rest so how do we do it there are various techniques like modified widman or modified flap operation also called your kirklin flap papilla preservation but we won't be going into those details now the types of flaps because before knowing the incisions you have to know which are the different types of flaps that are there so based on exposure we have the full thickness flap where we raise the entire soft tissue so the complete soft tissue is on one side and there is empty bone on the other side and partial thickness flap where some amount of soft tissue is left on the bone and some amount of soft tissue is reflected based on the flap placement after surgery if we return the flap to from where we raised it that is your gingival margin it's a non displaced flap whereas if we move the flap somewhere for example we raised it from here the cj and in this picture we have coronally displaced apically displaced it so this is it apically displaced flap based on the management of the papilla we have the conventional flap where we cut the papilla in the center like this or we have the papilla preservation flap where we don't cut the papilla in the center we include the entire papilla in one flap so we have given the incision here and it will be reflected like this i have a clinical picture in the next slide yeah so as you can see here the entire papilla is reflected on one side then we have based on the presence of releasing incisions or vertical incision a flap without vertical incision is your envelope flap and a flap with vertical incision you can see here the vertical incision that they have given is your relaxed flap now coming to the classification of incisions we have horizontal incisions and vertical incisions horizontal can again be classified into internal bevel clavicular or interdental incisions now let's come to the vertical incisions a vertical incision will always be given in this direction this is the only vertical incision that you are going to be coming across in periodontal flap surgeries whereas horizontal incisions are given like this so that is basically the difference between a horizontal and a vertical incision so the first horizontal incision that we'll be reading about is the internal bevel incision now internal bevel incision as mentioned here is given 1 to 1 and 1/2 mm from the gingival margin so here we have our gingival margin we go 1 to 1 and 1/2 mm below it inclined towards the alveolar crest so we place our this is your internal bevel incision now why do we call it internal bevel incision so internal bevel means the bevel is placed inside when you see it from outside you will see continuous gingiva you can't see the bevel we give a 45 degree bevel but we can't see it internal bevel it's also known as the reverse bevel incision it is also known as the first incision because when we are doing modified widman flap surgery which is one of the most commonly used flap once upon a time it is the first incision that is given now the instrument which we used to give this incision is a number 15 blade now number 15 has another variation number 15c how to remember it it's very simple the blade in which they cut out a c part is your 15c so 15 looks like this and 15c with a cut c part looks like this they made modified 15 to 15c for more precision ease of insertion into thin pockets or narrow pockets 
and that is how 15 is modified to 15c. Now coming to the second incision, again the same reason, while we do modified Wedman flap, this is the incision which is given at number 2, so this is also known as the second incision. The name is a giveaway, it is a sulcular incision, that means it is given inside the gingival sulcus. So let us locate our gingival sulcus, this is the gingival sulcus right here. And the incision goes like this. So the aim is to cut these fibers to get access. Your gingival and crestal al periodontal ligament fibers. So we give, this incision is given inside the gingival sulcus. That is your crevicular incision or also known as sulcular incision, also known as second incision. This is given using a number 12 blade. So how do we remember the number 12 blade, it resembles a 2. So that is your number 12. We also have a modification of number 12, 12D. I will be showing that to you in the later slides. Coming to the third incision, it is called the interdental incision. It is given right here like this. Why is it called interdental? Because it is given in between teeth. The instrument that we use for giving this incision is your Auburn's knife. So just a tiny recap. This is your first incision, also known as your internal bevel incision. Giving using a number 15 or 15 C blade. This is the second incision, sulcular or crevicular incision given inside the gingival sulcus. And this is your third incision, that is your interdental incision which is given using your Auburn's knife. First incision, 15C, second incision, number 12, third incision, Auburn's knife. When we are discussing about incisions, particularly horizontal incisions, there is another incision in which students tend to get generally confused, that is your external bevel incision. It is not an incision which is used in flap, however, the it is always put in MCQs as to confuse the students. So to make it clear, I have included external bevel incision over here. Now external bevel incision, as by the logic that I told you, the bevel is outside. That is, you can see the bevel. So the external bevel incision goes like this. And you are cutting a significant amount of gingiva, unlike your internal bevel incision, which is a much more conservative incision cuts a very little amount of gingiva. So this is your internal bevel incision which in which the bevel face is inside and your external bevel incision where the bevel is facing outside. Okay, let's move on. So yeah, this is how your external bevel incision is. Cuts a lot of gingiva and leaves the bevel facing outside. That is given using a Kirkland knife. Can you see this? Uh, in sharp contrast with your Auburn's knife, this is a very big knife with a kidney bean kind of an end. So that is your kidney bean ended Kirkland knife for external bevel incision for gingivectomy. Gingivectomy, as the name suggests, we cut a lot of gingiva and that is where your external bevel incision with Kirkland knife is used. So let's quickly identify these blades. This looks like a one. It is a number 11 blade. This looks like a 2, yeah, number 12 blade. Now can you see these two blades look same, but the difference lies here. This is a number 12 D blade. It has cutting edges both in the front and back. Number 12 cuts only in one side. Number 12 D cuts on both sides. So both of them are 12 because both of them look like 2. But this is 12D which cut, cuts on the both sides. Now this is a typical number 15 blade and this is your 15C where a tiny C has been cut out of the 15 blade. So these are your blades. So basic steps in a flap procedure is give your incision using the different blades. You may or may not have to give all the incisions, not necessary that you have to give all the incisions in all the flap surgeries. Once you have given your required incisions, reflect the flap. Once you reflect the flap, open flap debridement, that is remove soft tissue, uh, uh, granulation tissue, infected soft tissue, remove your calculus, reposition the flap and suture, that's it. 
So here I've just made a tiny table for you to understand that there are different incisions given in different surgeries. For example, modified Widman. It is one of the only flap procedures which uses all three incisions. First incision, that is your internal bevel incision, you given using 15 or 15 C, sometimes number 11. Second incision, crevicular incision, given using number 12 or 12 D. Third incision, interdental incision, given using Orban's knife. Uh, modified flap operation or Kirkland flap, only the second or crevicular incision is given. Whereas in gingivectomy, we give the external bevel incision. One last thing before I end the incisions, there's another flap known as the undisplaced flap, also known as internal bevel gingivectomy. Why so? Because here the bevel does face inside as you can see here. But unlike your internal bevel incision which is a very you know kind of a conservative incision which looks like this. This is a quite a huge incision which is given beyond the depth of your pocket and a lot of gingiva is cut. So it has both the factors of gingivectomy that is cutting a lot of gingiva and internal bevel where the bevel faces inside not outside. And that's why this is known as internal bevel gingivectomy or undisplaced flap. So that's all today regarding the incisions and instruments. If you have any doubts or if you want to ask something, please do leave your comments down in the discussion section. Thank you so much.